So in this video, we are going to be looking at Excel spreadsheets, and we're also going to be talking about the clausius clapeyron equation. So the clausius clapeyron equation is used to solve for the heat of vaporization. Now, in doing this, we have to first look at the clausius clapeyron equation. So if you look highlight here, I'm going to zoom in. All right. So it's natural log of pressure is equal to negative delta H VAP divided by R times 1 divided by the temperature plus the natural log of the constant. So what's interesting about this equation is that it's, it's a linear regression equation Y equals MX plus B. So now what we want to do is we want to graph this where we're graphing natural log of P on the Y axis and then one divided by the temperature in your x-axis and and ultimately determining the the slope of the best fit line now to do that i've already uh, come up with some values here now this actually comes from uh, tro's textbook so the first thing we want to do is make sure that our temperature is in kelvin and in fact this temperature is already in kelvin so we just go ahead and knock that out so that's done now the pressure doesn't matter about the units, but the pressure here is represented as tor. So the first thing we want to do is uh, is understand that. So our we need to calculate the one divided by the temperature, and we're going to put it first because it's going to be your x-axis, and then we'll do the natural log of pressure for your y-axis. So to go about calculating this, so to get Excel to do, to do the calculation for you. You type the equal sign in, and then you do one divided by it, and you highlight the cell. Now, in this case, we're pulling the the, the number from A3, so you no, know, you notice that it is highlighted here. So we press enter, and it calculates. Now, you could do that individually for each of these, but Excel's nice in the fact that it will automatic automatically calculate it. So if you hold the, the black crossbars over and double click it will calculate all the way down and if i go down here and click on this cell you will see that it is pulling that calculation from a8 which is what i want now we're going to do the same thing for the next column and so doing this we're going to type in equals to natural log because we want to do the natural log and we're going to highlight point eight because that's where we're pulling the data from and we're going to hit enter and then we're going to drag this down all right, so so now what we do is we're gonna we're gonna insert a graph. So we want to graph these two columns. So we're gonna highlight those two. You're gonna come up here. You're gonna press insert. Now there's a lot of different things we can pick, but we want to do a scatter plot. So we're gonna pick uh, scatter, and we're gonna do the very first one. And so here is our chart. All right, and our graph. So uh, you can see it's highlighted both the the columns that it's pulled the data from. And so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to clean this graph up just a little bit. So I'm going to do a quick layout here and we're going to give it a chart title. I'm just going to call this the uh, C, C equation. Uh, and so we're, we're solving for the heat of vaporization here. Keep that in mind. So this is the natural log of pressure. Always label your axes, by the way. And then this one here is going to be the one divided by temperature. All right, so good. So we've got our, our our axes labeled. Next thing I want to do is I don't need this series because we're not plotting different things together. Get rid of that, and then I also want to adjust the axis by formatting it. So notice that the minimum here is uh, where's a lot of dead space here. We don't want the dead space in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the minimum to 0.003. I'm going to hit enter. And so that cleans up that graph a little bit, gets us to where we are looking at the data and not a bunch of dead space. We could do a little bit more refinement here, but it's not necessary. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a trend line because, again, we need to slope from this from this graph. So we're going to add, right click on the data point. We are going to come down here. We're going to press add trend line. Now we're going to scroll down to where we, where we get to these three check boxes. Now I want to check the first or the, actually the second box and the third box now what you'll see is it will put an equation and an r squared value onto the graph now what we want so the two things here 
So obviously we're going to get the slope from the best fit line. And then we also see that our squared value is 0.9985. That's a good thing because that means that our data is very good and, and linear. So the, the farther away from one you are, the, the worse your data is. So you want the R squared value to be very close to one. So the so we're going to use the equation that we have over here. And now our slope here is equal to negative delta H VAP divided by R. Now what we want to do is we want to solve for the heat of vaporization. So delta, negative delta H VAP is equal to negative uh, slope times R. All right, so what we need is our our slope from this, okay? So slope uh, from the grass fit line is negative 3,773.5. The value of R is 8.314, and that's just because we're expressing it in units of energy for joules. So we don't want the 0 0.0806 because that's representing the ideal gas law. This is energy. We want this unit here. So this this R. All right. Now we're going to calculate the uh, heat of vaporization. So de delta H VAP. All right. So to do this, uh, we are going to we are going to do press the equal sign. We're going to use the equation that we have right here and I don't want to actually use that equation I'm just gonna take negative slope times R all right see how it's highlighting this too we're gonna multiply them together and you should not have a negative sign for the heat of vaporization in the end so here we are so we have our our heat of vaporization in joules per mole now just being picky here, I want to convert to kilojoules per mole. So we're going to take this number and we're going to divide by a thousand. All right. So this is a just a simple ex explanation how you go about solving for the heat of vaporization for the classic using the classic Clapeyron equation. And just a couple other nitpicky little things here. If you want to get the delta symbol in here. So notice I capitalized the D there. If I come up to the top and I type in symbol, that gives me my delta symbol. You can see it here. So if you're if you're nitpicky and you want it to be exactly the way it shows in the textbook, which is it's which is a good thing, uh, you can come up and you can convert those normal fonts into a symbol font. And that gets you your delta symbol. So, all right. I hope this helps you guys out in reference to forming a graph as well as, you know, pulling the, the slope and being able to calculate for the heat of air possession. Thanks.